Swami Vishnu Devananda talks about his own ideas on spirituality and what he believes in. Hari Om Tat Sat. Uh, before I uh, continue this talk, I want to give a small introduction about uh, my theory of yoga, my personal theory of yoga. Um, for me, my main philosophy is doesn't matter what the spiritual, spirit, uh, spiritual things or material things or emotional things, if we cannot use into our daily life, it is no use for me. That's the way I take to anything in life. Because most of our time in the out, out of the 24 hours, we face with the problems, physical problems, emotional problems, and spiritual problems. All exist only, mostly in the waking state. But there is a touch of these problems in the dream state, which is not a permanent thing, it changes from day to day, uh, night to night, or from time to time. But most of the other problems which originate uh, in 24 hours of our life mostly come out of the waking stage. If you are having a serious physical problem like cancer, you forget that in deep sleep and dream. It doesn't exist for you. If you've got a serious financial problem and the economical uh, uh, problem of the um, uh, other uh, uh, concerning your business, then it doesn't exist in the dream or in the deep sleep. If you got a heart heart ailment, heart trouble, it doesn't exist in the deep sleep or in the dream. If you've got emotional problems and heartbreaks, it doesn't exist in the deep dream or the deep sleep. If you are dissatisfied with the material problems, you are more, more on spiritual life you are looking for. If you want to be a saintly person, you want to try to change your life. It doesn't exist in dream of the deep sleep. This does not mean dream and deep sleep are unreal. From the yogi, the yogi point of view, they are real, just like the waking state. Not only they are real, they are very, very important. Yesterday I was reading in the newspaper, a Russian scientist, uh, Dr. Mal says, uh, it's about the dream. Um, you can tell from the dream what kind of sickness you are having in your physical life. Uh, just take an example, I can't recollect exactly all the things you are still in. Uh, suppose in dream you feel that you are choked. Someone is just sitting on your chest. Say if you dream like that, you got bron uh, bronchial problems. Uh, just an example. Uh, suppose um, you in the dream you feel that you are running and you can't run, you feel tired, then you got some heart problem, something like that. So you, you see, they are you know, diagnosing a new kind of uh, way of diagnosis, analyzing your dream, and then that is attributed to certain kind of physical ailments like heart ailments, heart ailments or liver complaints or arthritism, or a, uh, emphysema, or the bronchial troubles. So he is explaining. So the dream shows, it seems, some of the dreams that you show, 
what physical problems they are having. But this all the old theories of yoga, yoga is really the dream is not some real thing, it is also real and it is necessary. And again we conclude that a dreamless sleep also is bad. We need dream to work out some of our emotions, some of our problems, uh, it can work out in the dream. And so the dream is not an unnecessary stage, it's an unnecessary stage, it's a very essential. Again, another uh, article I was reading somewhere in the medical journal, uh, the effect of the um, sleeping pills, not only on the um, on nervous system, on the physical body, because when you take sleeping pills naturally, it uh, drops, uh, it puts, uh, uh, it ducks your nervous system and puts you into sleep. It's not a full sleep, it is only drugging. Well, apart from that effect, it reduces your dream time at night. Now, once your dream is reduced at night because of that sleeping pills, you will have many psychological problems you will have, it seems. Most of the problems, problems you can work out in the dream, emotional and tensions, etc. And this we are not able to rule in, and they become uh, psychopaths and um, even some of them will commit suicide, it seems, because of this. Uh, when, once they start taking the pills, and when the dream come back and they are bewildered and they will commit suicide, it seems. And uh, this is all uh, scientists are so, uh, dream is very essential, so also deep sleep. Doesn't matter how much you can have enjoyment, no one wants 24 hours enjoyment. No one wants 24 hours family life. No one wants to see 24 hours his own dear wife. Anyone wants to see 24 hours his wife? <laughs> your husband? Or your children? You ask? No one. <laughs> it becomes unbearable. Doesn't does, does matter how much you love them. 24 hours on your back it is impossible. So if you don't even want to see your own body 24 hours. You cannot take that. So the sleep in a state, you forget everything and just you don't even know your body, your environment, your sickness, your problems, your cancer, heart trouble, taxes, Vietnam war, you forget everything, you forget all those things. Let me rest myself now. I am not interested in all those things. Few of us, let forget all these things. I enter into the divine state yourself. So the deep state is very near to the universal consciousness samadhi. They are almost very near. Both are all, you will have experienced the same. You forget the environment and world and everything. You are resting in the self. But what exactly it makes the main difference is when you come from the sleep, and I come from my sleep, I am still the same old fool. But when I come from a superconscious state, I am full of knowledge. My entire outfit changes. There's only difference. Because one is, you are there, you are resting in the self, there is ignorance, there is a deep sleep, you are having the ignorance, the veil, you are not able to to the full bliss and, and, and knowledge of the self. You, when you come out, you start identifying with the physical body again, your qualifications as a man, woman and so forth. But in the, the superconscious state, exactly the same thing takes place that the first stage, you come back, you are going in, you, you no more identify with the physical body or the senses, we are always in state in, in a state of sahaja samadhi or basic state, superconscious state. That means you are identifying with the self. Just like no, I am identifying with the body all the time. 
and identify all the qualities in the body. So also, in the superconscious state, is, when you come out of it, though you are having a body, you think the body is just like a motor car. When you drive the motor car, you don't think that I am the car. You know that the car is only an instrument you are driving to take, take you place to place. You are different from the car. The same feeling you have when you come from superconscious state, you have the same experience that your body is like a motor car you are driving, you are different from it, you are not in any way, in any way connected to it. So if there is any pain in the body, it doesn't affect you. Just like if there is a, a something breaks down in the, in, in the car, it doesn't affect the driver. Of course, sometimes uh, you may be a little bit uh, uh, upset because you couldn't reach the place in time because a tire, there's a blow up in your tire or a, uh, the, uh, there's a carbon in the, in the carburetor and uh, the battery may be uh, depleted, you may not be able to start. These are inconvenient, but that doesn't affect your yours directly, there's no pain out of it. So, as a self, but physically from outside, you may think he is suffering. But he has got no connection with the body, he looks the body like a, like a motor car, he is driving. So, if there is something unnatural, he thinks in sickness and disease, it, it doesn't bother him. As the pain is only possible when you identify with the body, that's why you don't have any pain in deep sleep. You don't have any pain in, under, under the chloroform. You are not having any, any problems in the unconscious state where there is no mind. So the body is only a reflection to pass on this pain or pleasure. Otherwise everything is in your mind. When you are not identifying the body and mind, there is no pain or pleasure. So the superconscious state is almost like sleep. And you know, all these four states are necessary of your birth right, waking, dream, deep sleep, and the fourth state which you achieve through meditation. This fourth state we have never experienced. We all know the three experiences, waking, dream, and deep sleep, which are equally important. But anyhow, emphasis should be placed upon the waking state. Why? Through the waking state, most of your karma is being purged. You work out your karma through the waking state, when you work out, when you have pain. In the sleep, you cannot work out your karma because uh, though you, you may be fasting, suppose you are supposed to starve, uh, you didn't give a food to someone or you have stolen someone's food in their last life and you made him suffer hungry. So in this life, suppose you have to suffer on that particular day without food. Now, at that time, suppose, just early morning you woke up and according to your karma you have to suffer without food and the hunger pain you must feed it with the karma. Or someone gives you a morphia uh, or just gives you some kind of sleeping pills and puts you in the sleep morning. Now, even if you got that, that means you are during the lunch time you are supposed to feel this hunger pain and you can work out it because you are sleeping. But the time passed you woke up. Do you mean that you have, you have finished your karma? No. The, though the time you did eat is not the particular time that you eat or not, that doesn't matter. In fact, you are sleeping from morning till evening, you are in a sleep because of the pills or drugs or something happened. So, according to the karma, you should not eat meals. You didn't eat meals, too. So that means you have worked out, worked out your karma. No. You didn't work out the hunger pain which you created for another person. You are not aware of the pain. Until you have the same hunger pain and suffering, you will not be let out. The next day, when you wake up, the karma will only work out 
วันนี้เดี๋ยวครับอันนี้เงินบาลานซ์คำประคุณคำสิ่งละหันมีขนาดอีกสั่งได้ฮะเป็นเอ่อ just a small story when I was in the Himalaya wandering เราสมัครดูมีจ์ up the Himalaya about 9,000 miles I had to walk and uh, I took a walk at that time I will only have a, a pair of clothes no shoes nothing and no money I must eat just just depending upon the people and God just to test my strength uh, it happened so one day after the long walk a uh, long time and many pilgrims were there in route i was very hungry and i couldn't find food anywhere i was so tired after the long walk and the hot sun blazing and um, so i sat under the tree in mid midday everyone first and the sun comes down then we all start walking again um, so the i was just uh, resting under the tree was hungry i couldn't find food anywhere And um, suddenly, some pilgrim came and saw me. I was I looked tired and lying there. So he asked me whether I want some food. I said, "Sure, I'm very hungry." So he is a poor pilgrim, but he is very pious uh, farmer. So he he they carry generally the pilgrim they carry a kind of a wheat flour fried with the butter, um, butter uh, or, or carrot fried. Carrot, carrot, and butter with sugar. This is a stable diet they can eat because they're cooking, and this gives them a lot of stamina because they're sugar, they're the butter, fat, and they're the wheat, the carbohydrate. So it gives them a lot of strength, so they are able to walk with that. It's not much tasty, but it keeps you strong and able to walk. And the, he gave me so much; it's not sufficient to fill up my stomach. But still, at least something is there. I'm very happy. I had only cloth, so I asked him to put in the cloth, and I, I took it. Oh, I want to enjoy that wonderful thing in the hungry time. You know that when you get anything when you're hungry, it's all um, uh, nectar. So I said, I must enjoy this after taking a nice dip in the cold Ganges. Ganges is just on the uh, on the bank. Uh, we are walking always up through the ba- uh, banks of the Ganges. So the water is ice cold. Anyhow, the sun is very hot. So I just jumped into the. I left my things on the on the shore. Jumped into the Ganges and took one big uh, dip. It was so cold. Ran up. I mean, I don't know why the sun is blazing. So sun will warm. Uh, why so uh, dry dry me up? I want to. Now enjoy the thing I bought it. So I took the cloth, and as I took it, I skipped to one end. Everything fell on the sandy beach. <laughs> That is how it happened. The food came in my hand. As soon as I got it, I had eaten. I feel that there's something in my stomach. I walked with 25 miles. This is not the first day walking. Several days I already walked with so many passes. Very little food I had several days. And that particular day I didn't have anything. Almost on morning I was walking 25 miles and absolutely empty stomach. And um, I don't know when I am going to get my next meal. And somehow Kingdom was really generous to give me. He did his duty. If I had eaten, I think something would be. But I want to enjoy it better. I jumped into the gangs when I took up everything gone. Now you can imagine the the suffering <laughs> it creates. You <laughs> have no idea about it until you get into that. Now that's called working of the karma because you can have the things in your hand, but I must have done something wrong to some people in my la- last life. I must have taken a hungry man's food and ate myself and enjoyed. And I have to suffer the same painful sensation now. Until I have this painful sensation, this is not who helps me. No one can help me. I have to undergo and work out that karma. So God bless the day. So he drank some more Ganges water. That's all I had. And started walking the afternoon. 
By evening, you know, another thirty miles to empty stomach walking, and the first day again I said, but I said, no, I don't know where I am going, we have food now. So tired, we can even ask someone some food. So I beckoned, someone was, yes, yes, another old Swami, he just passed by his Swami, and he said, come on with me. I said, he is just waiting for me. He, everything, all the delicious things you can find, he is just brought there to, to, to give me. Because my suffering is over by saying that karma, and now I will not suffer the next, that particular evening, because I will be doing bad karma for that suffering. So this is the way this law of karma operates. So if you have, if I had supposed in the during that particular time I was supposed to suffer on that lunch time, if I had slept and I didn't have the hunger pain, then I can walk out my karma. Next day I have to suffer and pay it off. So this is the way the law of karma operates. So all your law of karma only works out in your waking state. Because you have done this karma in your waking state, so you have to work out in your waking state. So my philosophy is, doesn't matter what you do in your life, if it cannot be incorporated into the daily life of human being, I will not accept it. Even a philosophy, it doesn't matter even if it's a heaven, I may go after that, I may go after death, I don't care. But what about now? Can you find peace immediately? Can I incorporate and get the benefit of the meditation in my daily life? Can I put that philosophy to elevate, el 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 eliminate my suffering? Can I use the yogic technique to, mo to, to remove my physical, mental and uh, spiritual hunger? If it's possible, then I take it. So all my life, I experiment in a way, I try to take every essence, every book, everything I can find in and experiment it and try to put it into into death the human being's life. That's the way. So whatever I am teaching is useful not only hereafter, I don't know what you may know it or not, but we have to have some benefit now immediately at this very moment where you live and work. So that's the purpose. In fact, that's the one main purpose of yoga. yoga. Yoga must bring happiness. Happiness is the purpose of yoga. Suffering is not the yoga. But the happiness is not excitement of the senses. Sense, sense excitement is only bringing more pain. So, I try to incorporate everything. So, the philosophy what I teach will be very useful in your waking state, in your day-to-day life. And then again, not only for the average human being, uh, suddenly another vision came, I must try to incorporate into the leaders of the world, because they also need the same peace and same self-discipline if they want to live, otherwise they have some inner calamity. So, uh, everything that I do, whether from the highest to the lowest, it is a practical life. So the theory and karma will help and will give you an idea why you suffer. At least I have I got some answer. Otherwise I have to blame God for everything. Uh, some someone else, if someone has stolen my money, I blame someone. If I someone has taken my money, I cannot blame anymore anyone because of course, I try to save the, uh, keep the money in a very safe place. Still, suppose someone came in and taken it away, I cannot blame that person because I must have stolen money from someone in the last life I am paying. So here, uh, if, if you look in that attitude, you will have, you will never, you will never get disappointed. Even suppose failure comes in your life, 
You now feel disappointed, dejected. Okay, this failure is because I have done something wrong and I am paying it for. So tomorrow I am going to be better. So you never look down hard, uh, down good. Always, oh yes, if this worked out, it's better for me. Everything happened for the best. Even this will pass away. So you enter, you take this philosophy very seriously. That is, everything happens for the best. Even this will pass away. Even that bad sensation of hunger pain will not last. I am not going to eternally get hungry. So this attitude will be there. So you all should be very happy if you know this philosophy. Then something goes wrong. You know that it's only a temporary state. It's not a permanent state. Nor is God is made to do that. Nor is the fault of another person. You accept it and you try to be a better person so that tomorrow you will not be in a, in a wrong by performing a bad action now. You won't have a reaction tomorrow in a bad way. So the whole philosophy you can sum up law of karma which we can apply in our day-to-day -day life. So I take that philosophy. So I start with that philosophy and then we continue up. So I mentioned you, mentioned you that we have to see something to make our personal life happy. And I am sure that no one is 100% happy in this world. No one is 100% unhappy too. But in between happiness and unhappiness, we got some moment of peace. And that peace we have to increase. Now, what is the moment of peace in between the happiness and unhappiness? I am just telling not the true happiness of the spiritual bliss I am discussing or ordinary happiness. Well, when the mother is with the child in her arm, she is happy. So, so is the child. When you are with our friends and eating a, a nice meal, they are happy. This is not an excitement, it's just a natural social happiness which is, which is bound to come by those association and so forth. Then, then you miss your friends for a long time, whom you love, you are unhappy. Then the things won't go the right way, you expect a promotion and uh, the boss didn't give the promotion, you are unhappy. So, in between this unhappiness and happiness, there is a peaceful moment. These peaceful moments are very rare, but we must have a glimpse of this peaceful state. You are neither happy nor unhappy. It's not because people are there, it's not because money is there, you don't care. It's not that you didn't have a job, you become unhappy, you didn't care. It's like you don't have the food tomorrow, you didn't care about it. So, <coughs> you are contented to be in yourself. And this is called the peaceful state, this content state this is called the peaceful state. And in that stage, you feel that you can get strength and you can draw strength. You will not lean upon bank balance or other human beings for, for finding strength. 
So the yoga, so the law of karma gains if you are ha- materially happy and uh, socially happy, then it accepts for it. I have done some good karma in the past, it doesn't bother you. If the thing goes the other way, it doesn't bother you too. So you come to a state of peaceful spite, and this is called yoga. Yoga samatta mukchade. Yoga is balance of the state of mind, the second definition. The first definition you heard this morning, uh, this afternoon, yoga chitta vritti nirodaha, according to Padanchali, yoga is subjugation of the modification of the mind, of thoughts of the mind. That means, when thoughts are all fell, it is steady. When Lord Krishna says, yoga samatta mukchade, yoga is Steadiness of the mind. Your mind is not disturbed when there is everything happiness. Suppose uh, someone calls you on the on the te- uh, on the uh, television uh, on, on the tele- on the phone and said, "Oh, you have one a television set. Oh, you jump and dance. You will do that. You just take it calmly. Thank you. That's my karma." <laughs> Well, another person called, well, uh, you, you, have, you have lost uh, uh, some money, thank you, that may be my karma. So, your mind will not be perturbed on either conditions. And so, yoga samatta mutchare, balance the state of mind. In pressure and pain, it is same. In happiness and unhappiness, it is same. In cold and heat, it is same. In victory and defeat, it is same. In success and loss, it is same. So, it doesn't change its nature. And that's called yoga. If you reach that stage, then you are in a perpetual superconscious state. And that's not possible for us. Though you can meditate, suddenly someone will call, uh, someone calls me, I'm a fool. It upsets me. After all, it's only word, fool. Why should it upset? It is, I didn't, I didn't become a fool. I actually, I'm not going to get hungry. But the word has got so much effect. It, it creates agony and pain and hatred and jealousy and anger. A simple word. I can't keep my mind calm at that time. Well, someone calls, oh, Swami Vishnu, the great yogi, wonderful person. He said, what? Oh, I'm happy I'm in the heaven. That's also bad. That's why yogi's attitude is neither up nor down. Both criticism and praise, we take it evenly. It doesn't affect him if he criticize you. If you listen up at him, it will praise him. That's why it's, if any yogi before says, I am a God realized soul, I am a great saint, I am a great yogi, I got great mantra powers, I can everything with Kundalini, a master will say, go and touch him with SB40. If you use this SB40 on him, then you find out he is a saint or he is a yogi, he has awakened his Kundalini, he can talk all this nonsense, but he applied his SB40, he can find out easily. You want to know what is the SB40? You take your shoe and give him 40 beatings and see what happens to his face. If he has that same smiling and saintly attitude, then he is a saint. But when the slightest twist comes in his face, so he says, reach that perfection. <laughs> but don't apply to this. <laughs> you won't find one thing to say in this world that way. <laughs> so you can understand it. It is very easy to say cosmic consciousness and I can awaken your cosmic consciousness. Yesterday, one lady from Ohio says, a man in the came and uh, he said, he is in, in one year he is able to give you the cosmic consciousness and awaken all these things.
and only he wants ten dollars for a lesson. That's all he expects. Eh? <laughs> so imagine the ten dollars son, and he is going to give uh, in ten lessons, and in one year he is able to give. My God, now why he wants money? He has attained all his perfect body consciousness. Why he wants money? So that's the attitude. So remember that this you cannot buy. You cannot get in any easy way. There is no easy formula, and you should not go from one teacher to another to find this peace. Study wherever you are, according to the karma. According to the karma, you may be in the yoga camp today. That's a good karma has brought you here to stop going and suffering in a nightclub. <laughs> or in a gambling house and lose all your money and then come back early morning with the, the, uh, 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 what do you call it, hangover and uh, you have lost the money with the hangover and uh, bad feeling is sleeping till 10 o'clock, the low trouble pain, you call the doctor. What a holiday. Thank God you came here though you had to get up in the morning and you are cheerful. You can enjoy that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, just the rice and eat a bit of uh, and the, the salad. <laughs> Very happily and heartily you can enjoy it. Though they may be uh, eating all those rubbish food and suffer later on, you got no bad consequences of that. So, this is because of a good, good, good karma you have a, you have a, you won't be here. Otherwise, even if you come, I've seen some people, that bad karma will not make them to stay. I can change them definitely. But their karma will just take them away because they may find, oh yes, yeah, the room is not satisfactory. There may be one cause. Or maybe the first day they didn't find the little food is not good for them. Or they may just quarrel with someone, oh yes, I didn't like that person, so they leave. Just see, a simple thing, that karma will take them away. Just like the food came into your hand, it will go, won't go into your mouth. So also they came to the place where they can real health, real strength, their disease or sickness, arthritis or rheumatism, physical, mental affliction, afflictions can be removed. Yet the karma will drive them away and they will be unhappy. So this is the law. <coughs> so the peaceful moment we have to find between the happiness and unhappiness and this peaceful, peaceful moment we all must have experienced now and then. A quiet period, you lock yours in your room, you want to be just alone. Now, this period is the most important period for a yogi. And that comes through contemplation and meditation. Well, as I told you this afternoon, meditation is the seventh stage. We are not ready for meditation. And that before meditation, that stage concentration. And we are not even ready for concentration. Before concentration, that stage of the Tehara. That is, you try to shut off your senses from the world, so mind will not be disturbed. Suppose, if I, someone calls me Swami Vishnudevananda, it's a fool to disturb my mind. If I could shut off my ear, I didn't hear what he said. It doesn't affect me. <laughs> well, I, I can't do that. And um, before Satyahara, there's one more stage before you can reach the mind. There's the breath control. You are not able to reach the Kevala Kumbhaka stage, where the mind, the breath slows down and automatic suspension takes place here. It doesn't flow out within the nostrils. And so that's the first step to reach the mind. And we haven't done that. And before this control of the breath, there's one stage called asana. You must have the, a healthy body, a healthy organ, so in a healthy body, a healthy mind works. So with the unhealthy mind, the troubles of cancer and heart trouble and blood pressure, what meditation we can do? 
So before that, you have to have the physical health. So you have, you are just starting that. And before the physical health, and uh, you have to have at least two basic foundations on which everything is built upon. All others, there are eight stages in Vajrayoga. All the eight steps are built upon two corner stones. That's the real stone, foundation stone. From Yama and Nirma. Yama starts with Satya Mahimsa Brahma Jaga Vajraha. Satya Mahimsa Brahma Jaga Asya Vajraha Yamaha. Then Sharja Sundar Sarasada Isra Pandana Nirmaha. Yama and Nirma. Sharja Sundar Sarasada. Satyam, Ahimsa, Brahmajare, Asre, Abarigraha, these are the Yama. Yama means restrictions. Because before you can train your mind and find the seed, you must train the wild horse that is your, your mind. You cannot ride a horse without training him. If you jump over a, a wild part, you throw you up. You break your back. So you have to train him first. So you have to give restrictions. So you put a halter first and then you, 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 you make him run and run a little bit and then when he knows how to take his steps properly, how to trot and how to canter and then you try to put a saddle. And if you kick the saddle out, you may not like, you know, I don't know what is happening. And then after putting the saddle, maybe then you want to give some weight on his bag, put some two heavy sandbags and make him run with that. Then he learns, oh yes, it's all right. He learns. And then once you know that he won't kick you out and then it's like slowly get over him. First two times he may not, and then he learns. Um, Eventually, he will take you wherever you want, you train him. So also, first restrictions you have to put. First restriction, halter, bridle, reins, all is necessary. And this is what Yama does. Shauja, I'm sorry, um, Satyam, truthfulness, Satyam, uh, Ahimsa, and non-violence. Sutamansa Brahmacharya, celibacy, Avaragraha, non-stealing, and Sutamansa Brahmacharya, Asteya. That means non, not accepting bribes. And these are the ethics. These ethics help you to train your mind. Because you see, some money is lying there, but no, not belongs to anyone. There's no one is there. Well, after I will tell you, no, though it, there's no one else, you try to find a person, his owner. Of course, if you didn't find an owner and you tried your level best, then there's a different question. But you know that you can find the, uh, the you, Money must be belong to some campers, so you can find it and give to him. But if you try to take it away, that means you haven't trained in the mind. There is nothing wrong. That's why you see, you know, we don't consider it is a sin. Nothing is a sin. What you are doing is by doing that particular action, you restrict, restricted your mental capability. Your mind has shrunk a little bit more and we can look a bit narrower. We are trying to expand the mind. So by doing that little action, you restricted your mind and we can look a bit smaller instead of bigger. So, uh, there is nothing wrong in stealing, according to yoga. But it makes you small, it makes you feel very uh, 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 restricted person in your movement, in your thinking, in your capability. So also, 
by telling life there is nothing wrong, but he suffered internally and make you further down. So by violence, it's nothing wrong. I can maybe I can be more a powerful person by just a beating everyone, shooting everyone, everyone to obey my commands. I can be a strong will. Well, there's nothing harm about it. But how long I can hold it? I cannot hold long time. The same reaction will come on over me. And what I do, I reach back. Karma, law of karma. So I become small and I pay for a, a did an action, I am bound to get it. So these restrictions are not because it is a sinful act. Celibacy, celibacy is another In fact, every religion, everything there is a form of celibacy, even for householders. To certain extent, there must have certain self-control. Because if you let loose your self-control, then you are like animal. There is no difference between man and animal. What meditation you can do? As uh, some of these uh, younger generations, uh, uh, in the hippie colonies, they take marijuana, LSD, and have free love and free sex. It's all accepted, and then they can do anything they want, and they think that they are, they are practicing yoga. It's absolutely uh, unbelievable because there is no such thing a wise life in yoga. Yoga is a discipline and and directed life. Your every moment of your life is being guided by your own will. It's not your wings and fancies take care of you. You control your wings and fancies and direct your life the way you want it. And under the drugs, under the energy, under the marijuana, this under the um, alcohol, under the uh, nicotine habit, under the coffee habit, uh, um, you cannot have this, this control. So that's why these restrictions are very necessary. Then, in your daily life, you practice these restrictions. Then, when you sit for meditation, your mind is no more disturbance. It's very peaceful and calm. Because I didn't do any lies today. I didn't steal anyone. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't create any violence. I didn't in any way brought any pain and suffering to any humanity. So the mind doesn't got anything to to shrink. It expands and it's powerful at that time. So, moral action limits the power of the mind. So that's why Yama, then comes the Niyama. That comes um, certain observances. And the first observance, Shaita, cleanliness. Again, some of the uh, yogis, so-called yogis, they don't want to wash their hands and feet and uh, have a dirty beard and dirty hair and think that is against religion and God. That's not the yoga thought. First thing is cleanliness, external and internal. Not only putting, washing the skin or, and a little bit of uh, brushing the teeth, but it's more than that. The real beauty is inside too. So you must have a pure heart, a heart which bleeds for the humanity, a heart which bleeds for the poor, a heart which bleeds for the sick, and a heart which bleeds for the suffering humanity. At that time you can have a, a pure, pure internal purity. So shauja comes both external and internal, then santosa. Contentment. And then we all know the benefit of contentment and you are not explanation. Charges and thus covers simple penance. You won't, whenever your mind takes advantage of you, you punish it. So how many people came late this morning? Show the hands. How many people came after 6 30 this morning for the class? No one. Only one person. Um, well, that means your mind is taken advantage of you. So the penance comes, punishment. Well, 
I am going to punish my mind today, I will not have my lunch. I am going to punish because you didn't get up and came for the meditation and exercise in time. So I am going to punish you. It's called simple planning, half a day fasting. Uh, I am going to do half an hour extra breathing exercise mm-hmm. for that. Or I am going to do another one hour of meditation and java for not meditating in the morning. This is called simple penance. Penance is not torture in the body, this is different. Lord Krishna says, this is called uh, Lokha. People who torture their body in the name of yoga, they have never attained any success. They only suffer and torture. Neither they can spiritual bliss, nor they can get material bliss. At least have a material bliss than to suffer like that, that's what Lord Krishna says. So, Torturing the body in the name of religion and yoga is completely prohibited. The standing on the cold water or sta- standing under the hot sun this is called uh, unaccepted uh, penance, called a rajasic and the tamasic penance, which is completely prohibited by Lord Krishna. So, this simple penance fasting, observing silence for an hour, or doing extra breathing a little bit. So this way, any time when the mind disobeys, disobeys, you punish them. It's called simple penance, silence and fasting. So Tavis, then Swadhyaya. So you need constant reminder, because you will forget whatever you are hearing, you are going to forget tomorrow when you go back home. So who is going to guide you? That's called Swadhyaya. Few books written by great people and including your religious book like Bible, Thor, Torah, um, and the Gita, Upanishads. Uh, this type of book will keep you in constant touch with the, with the reality, the truth which is within you. Because when you don't have this touch, uh, in the beginning stage, you will be easily pulled away from the life you are reading now. So that's called Sadhayam, reading the books of the uh, of philosophy, philosophical and religious books are very essential in your daily life. Half an hour to fi- or fifteen minutes at least you must devote for this. Of course, in the yoga can is an ample opportunity to hear uh, the talk which are reading. This opportunity you may not have all the time in the city life, occasionally you may go and hear some lectures now and then, but otherwise you don't have. So the book is a constant companion for you at that time, for Sadhya. So these are the two first stages. Once you do these first two things, you try to maintain your daily life, then with the asanas you will have strong and physical body and healthy body, and then with the healthy body you try to learn the art breathing exercises, and the slow, when you sit for meditation, your breath slows down and Kerala Gumbala sets in. And when the Kerala Gumbala sets in, you are in the Pratyahara state. You won't try to, your sense completely uh, incapable of doing any function. When there is no prana, again the fear of prana I will discuss tomorrow. When there is no prana, your senses cannot function. Your eyes cannot see, your ears cannot hear. So your eyes